Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a great parliamentarian and a great conservative, the Right Honourable John Redwood. Some three years, three months have passed since that historic referendum decision. Now, I, I'm sorry that so many of the clever, well-educated elite in our country struggle to understand the, the verb to leave. <laughs> I've never found it difficult to understand what it meant, so perhaps I better clarify it for them again because they're always so willing to tell you and me why we voted leave before they go on to explain how we got it wrong. And I just like to remind them, we voted leave because we wanted to leave the bureaucratic institution that is the European Union. We wanted to leave its single market and its customs union. We do not like asymmetric and one-sided rules which have damaged our economy, undermined our fishing industry, done considerable uh, bad things to our farming industry and were always asymmetric because they deregulated industry where they were strong and they didn't allow us the same access in services where we were strong. So we knew exactly what we were doing when we voted to leave. And if Remain is still in any doubt, they should go back to their own statements because they told us uh, when we said we wished to leave uh, that it would mean leaving the single market and the customs union. And they thought that was a threat, and we took it as a promise. <laughs> and so we wish for that now to be delivered. Because I remember the government of the day promising that leaving the European Union would be our decision. And they promised us that they would implement our decision. I remember the bulk of Parliament telling us that they would implement our decision. And I distinctly remember not just the Conservative Party who would like to implement the decision, but also the Labour Party telling people in the 2017 election, in order to gain election to this parliament, that they would honor the promise and implement Brexit. So I have one simple message to the Labour Party and to any colleagues in the Conservative Party who have been wobbling Keep your word. This parliament is doing enormous damage to the idea of parliamentary government. It is hijacking the prime minister. It is trying to abuse the legislative process by telling him that he has to break his word in this fundamental issue of trust, where we said to the British people, you decide. And now so many MPs think they know better than the British people. They think safe in their seats. But come the election, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't want to be an MP who'd broken his word to the British people when he'd said that he would help us leave the European Union. It is a disgrace that we now have an opposition that will not allow us a general election. Who ever heard of an opposition demanding an early election for two years or more, and then when one is on offer, they take a quick look at the opinion polls and say, good heavens, we couldn't possibly have an early general election because we might lose our seats. Yes, Labour, you might lose your seats, and the reason you might lose your seats is because you've done everything to block the will of the British people, to break your word, to break the promises of government and parliament, and to lead to this chaos which we see, a parliament which cannot govern and a parliament which will not allow us to put our case to the British people so that we have the chance to form a government with a majority. Well, let me just give a few reassurances to the many decent Remain voters uh, who the Remain propagandists uh, try and mislead. They tell us we will be crashing out Ladies and gentlemen, we will not be crashing out. We will be moving to become an independent, democratic, free country that will trade with the European Union as America does and as China does and as many other great countries do, 
that do not have to belong to the European Union in order to sell them widgets or food. And let us also deal, and let us also deal uh, with their lie uh, that when we crash out, we will be short of food and short of pharmaceuticals. This is a disgraceful thing to be threatening people with. Because we all know that pharmaceuticals and food come in from non-European Union countries already through our borders. And we know that the authorities of Calais and Dover, who account for a modest proportion of our total trade, are secure in the knowledge that they have made the investment and made the commitment and they have no wish to lose the business. These people don't understand how a global enterprise trading economy works. But the people in Calais know that if they messed up and got in the way of our trade through the Calais port, then Zeebrugger and Antwerp and Rotterdam and others would be very willing to take it on. So do not mislead us. And then they tell us there's something called no deal, which we did not vote for. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want no deal, and I've got great news uh, for all those on the Remain side. We're not going to leave with no deal, because when we leave on the 31st of October without signing the withdrawal agreement, there will be a haulage agreement, and there will be a customs agreement, and there will be a government procurement agreement, and there will be an aviation agreement. There will be dozens of agreements, ladies and gentlemen, for the simple reason that people on the other side of the channel want to carry on with a very profitable trade, just as we do, and they recognize they sell more to us uh, than we sell to them, so it's even more in their interests that there should be these ready agreements so that on the 1st of November, things still move, trade still takes place uh, as it does prior to our departure. So those remain people who say they're going to be huge queues of lorries clogging up the roads of Kent, I say to them, do they not understand that, that customs, like VAT, like excise, like currency, and those three things all have to be changed at the moment, take place on computers and through electronic systems? I often think the Remain propagandists haven't recognized that we live in the world of the computer and digital exchange of information. And so I got great news for them. It will work, ladies and gentlemen, because we got some technology. We don't need to go off and invent new technology. The technology we've got will work just fine. And my concluding thoughts are these. Many of us have waited many years for the moment when we will leave the European Union. As good Democrats, we accepted the verdict in 1975 and tried to make the best of it. But it was their European Union which transformed from something they misdescribed as a common market into a mighty project to create a super state uh, with a president and a parliament and a big lawmaking and tax raising set of procedures. And it was that which the British people judged in the referendum and that which we intend to leave because I want that money back, because there are priorities in Wokingham and elsewhere in the country that need a bit more public spending, and what better place to finance it from than foregoing the opportunity to send all that money to rich countries on the continent. And I want powers to set our own taxes back, because there are VAT impositions on things that I don't want VAT on, but as a mere UK parliamentarian under the EU, I and my colleagues can do nothing about it because those taxes have to be imposed by fear to the EU. And I want our lawmaking back because the European rules on fishing have degraded our fishing grounds and done damage to our fishermen and women. And I know we can do better. And I want to cut those food miles. And to do that, I need an agricultural policy in the United Kingdom that puts food production at the top and gives more support to local food production rather than encouraging uh, subsidized competition from the continent, tariff-free, coming in and doing damage to our farmers. So ladies and, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we made the right decision when we voted to leave. We knew exactly what we were voting for. 
We do understand enough of the English language to know that leave means not just leaving a bit of the institutions, but leaving them all. It doesn't mean staying slaves to the single market rulemaking or slaves to the customs union. It means cutting tariffs where it would be better for our consumers that we do so. It means taking back control, control of our money, control of our laws, control of our borders, and control of our taxes. If the smallest non-EU country has that independence and that pride in themselves, why shouldn't we? To see our future videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon. That way you'll get a notification by email as soon as a new video is available. In the meantime, please do help us out and like and share or retweet this post so your friends and followers can see it too.